Hey love bugs and cyber worlds, welcome back to yet another fabulous episode of the Rainbow Show. So normally I have a girl talk, but this episode I decided to cancel that particular segment because I will be sitting down and having a girl talk, a kiki, an advice column section honey, with the fabulous, a sister, an auntie, a icon, an inspiration, the Miss Savannah Rivers will be joining me, and we're going to be talking about a whole bunch of fun stuff. Hi world, it's me Lorraine. The queen of laughter, the queen of giving, the queen of believing, the queen of talk. The queen of laughter, the queen of giving, the queen of believing. So, I am here with the legendary Savannah Vivers. Say hey, girl. Hi, honey. It has been an honor. I've been waiting for this moment. Let me tell you why. Let me set up the story first, and then we'll go from there. Okay. I started Dry in Western Mass um, around early 2000-ish, I would say, 2001. And this diva here was an icon then. I looked up to her and Ladiva Jackson and a couple other girls around the scene. So how the hell you being, girl? Good, honey. You're, You're looking fabulous. Right. Look at you. So, so let's talk about Miss Savannah Vivers, honey. How long have you been doing drag? I just started yesterday, child. Child, who you tell? Don't it feel like that? Uh huh. Uh huh. No, but honestly, how long? Tell the kids how long this legend has been in the business. For over thirty years. <sighs> Did y'all hear that? She's older than half y'all parents out there in heels. Over 30 years she's been doing this art craft. What keeps you rejuvenated to do this? What keeps you going? I love drag. I like the ups and downs of drag. Um, I'm basically what you call an old school entertainer. But I like going out and seeing the various new forms of drag. Or their interpretation of it. Right. Um, I, I like that. I like, uh, I get motivated by old school, of course, because that's my genre. But I like some of the newer girls, mm -hmm. and I really enjoy you, too, oh, in your show. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. But listen, so Savannah, um, you who've been in this business 30 years, it's like um, seeing music, I'm pretty much, well, I'll be 37 in October. You've been doing drag for 30 years. I lived through the Michael Jackson, the Paul Abdul's, the Janet Jackson in their Hey Prime days. And I'm sure you lived through some fierce drag queens. I mean, you've been in it 30 years. RuPaul's been in it 30 years. So you and Ru go way back to when it first started. How has drag changed since you started to what you see now? Because I feel like it's a whole new animal from just when I started. I've only been doing it 13 years. It's, it's changed a lot. I really can't even put the words together. I see some people's interpretation. Uh, I One of the girls that I really like um, from RuPaul's Drag Race, Nina Flowers, oh. the Andragonist yes. type drag, I like that. And I've seen like the Mia Easy Lay, like the different color hair and right. the different Lady Gaga-ish type stuff. And I just take from everyone's thing and I just do my own thing. But it's good to see that it has evolved. Mm -hmm. I think when I started out, there wasn't a whole lot. A variety? A variety because if you were to do something like a Nicki minaj -y type thing, it was just too racy. Oh, okay. You had to do top 40 drag. I'm glad that it's more very where you could do different materials. So it's more versatile. It's more versatile. And we're how we know a lot of versatilities out there. So darling, so how many titles do you have? Because I know you was really heavily into the pageant scene. Um I the last title that I won was in 1999. That was Miss Springfield Gay Pride. Nice. After that I took a break. Um I have I have 16 titles, but that was my last title. My thing that I would like to do 
is I would like to do a national, get a national title. That's the one thing I don't, I always wanted to do. Become like an all-American goddess or Continental Plus or something like nice, that. Nice, yeah. yeah. Did you hear that, y'all? 16 titles. I have two and a runner-up. And the two that I have was one was Mr. One the, Nine Months Later, I Came and Did Mrs. And then second title, which was a runner-up, was Polo. Miss Polo. Um, I, I remember that too. Runner up. So I love the pageantry. I just felt that it, I wasn't a pageant girl back then. I, I felt I was a pageant girl back then. With me, I think what happened with me, I'm kind of reversed because I took a long break and a big long due sabbatical in drag for it was like eight, nine years. But I think that when I first started drag and I was looking up to all of the legends such as yourself and Angelica Nations and, you know, girls. And I know you keep hearing these names and you're probably like, who are these queens? Well, Facebook them and you'll get educated. These are queens that had made an impact Phenomenal in my life. Girl. Phenomenal girls. And people don't understand that you don't have to necessarily be on television to impact somebody's life. Because these girls have really impacted my life and they are what inspired me to become who I am today and the thing is is that I think that I lost a lot of passion for the performance side I think back then I was so having to stay relevant with the passion on the performance side that I kind of really lacked my look and now that I've grown into who I want to be, the character that I want to portray, now I need to be at 36 and seeing how drag evolved and see what these younger girls are doing with splits and high kicks and fireballs and all this other stuff. I'm like, girl, how do I stay relevant with that? Um, so I'm trying to gain that passion back for the stage. And I'm doing one or two shows a year now. I'm not doing them as frequent as I used to. And that's of choice. Um, but I just think that I'm ready to, just, just, how, how, what advice would you give me to get the passion back for the stage? Because right now my passion is my look and my TV show and, you know, my music. Well, first of all, I don't think that you have to always be an uh, entertainer or you don't have to always do a show in order to be relevant. Hmm. I, I come out now and I don't perform that much by choice. And I'll go out, but I still keep my name out there. Right. And I, I like to mentor girls. And when I get that energy back of just going to the club, if I feel a certain song or I feel like a certain thing I want to do, then it comes back and forth because I've been doing it for 30 years. 26 of them have been performing constantly. And you do get tired. And you got to find that way that to recharge of your own doing. Right, and I can say that, and I said this in one of my shows, that drag absorbs who you are. It's a beautiful escape of who you are for the now. But it takes a toll on everything because I can speak out of my own experience because when I'm Lorraine, honey, there is no checkbook. There is no limit. I just go in. I have that mentality that I live like a rock star. And that's good for me. It may not be good for you, but it's good for me. But eventually, darling, I just wish that all of the younger queens can realize, and you can probably contest this and correct me if I'm wrong, that you need to have a balance. And yeah. that balance has to be where you can be your alter ego and then you can be who you are. Because what I see happening more and more so frequently in the newer generation of drag, there is no alter ego or new character. What they are in drag is what they are as boys. Yeah, and, and, and I, I agree. And I think that if you're going to do that, by all means, go ahead because I'm nobody to judge. But just remember that drag has been designed or created in my perspective to create an illusion and an effect. If you can't create the effect, if you're giving the same effect but just putting on makeup, you're not giving an illusion. You know, you follow what I'm saying? And not only that, um, it works because a lot of transgendered women do that. They become transsexual, transgendered. And and are you trans? Are you transitioning? Or have you ever thought of becoming a transgendered woman, or do you just like being who you are and you're comfortable knowing that you're Savannah Rivers, but you're also still waking up as whomever you identify with? What do you more identify with? Um, transgendered or drag? I, they. Well, either or, because I go to work dressed up. But I don't consider it transgendered or a label. I'm myself. As far as I'm concerned, Hallelujah. I don't want to Hallelujah. 
do a lot of stuff to my body. Um, a lot of co I'll get things done as they need to be done, but I don't want to dissect my whole body, have everything done, an overhaul on myself. I, I'm comfortable with who I am in my own skin. You know, um, when things need to be done, I wouldn't mind having a nice set of busts mm -hmm. or whatever. But I don't want to uh, do so much with my nose or other stuff. Uh, I just want to highlight and touch real quick on one thing that just stood out to me in what you just said. That she is comfortable in her own skin. Now, let me ask you, was that something that instantly happened or did it take years and years of growing to love who Savannah is and embracing not only and then what I can imagine is that society back when you were coming out has not been as fierce as it is now yeah. I remember when I started drag which was just a little over 10 years ago honey there was no getting ready at home and going to the club girl you got ready at the club yes you did and here it's I can get in full geesh and walk out of my house get in my car and walk downtown and it'd be more accepted and this is why I say it's important people to know your her story history she story or whatever you want to call it because people like Savannah who had endured things that you don't even understand the beginning of it honey and you just want to hackle and joke and laugh and make fun of. But if it wasn't for this lady who is sitting next to me, you, my friend, would have to be experiencing like Rosa Parks did in the back of the bus, girl. No shade. Okay. And so I just want them to know that. So it took you about how many years to get comfortable with being Savannah? Or is it it's, a work in progress? It's a work in progress. It was uh, when I first started out, when you could... You had to have two forms of male ID. You couldn't just go totally out and drag, and you could not accept tips bodily. You couldn't accept tips in the way that they do now. Like they couldn't place them on your body. Yeah, you yeah. had to. They had to be like in a basket, or and they would put it in a basket or whatever. Not only did we have to endure that part but we had to endure a lot of racism as well when i first started out and at the pub they didn't really want to serve me you know i'm glad that you touched on that because i've been telling a lot of people and i'm a huge believer is that if we want equality first it starts at home there's no reason for you to shade your own sister or shade your own brother or shade anybody within this community because like you said and I'm glad that Savannah said it and you're hearing it not only from me you're hearing it from somebody who you need to respect and somebody that you will have to learn from eventually because honey without Savannah being here again it's just like any industry without Patty honey there's no Beyonce okay okay without no Patty I mean without no um uh, let's go Arthur Kitt there's no um Patty you know it, it's just a cycle and um, I think that we need to understand and respect each other's art for what it is. Because I said it in my last show, my drag ain't your drag, honey. Your drag ain't the next girl's drag, but nonetheless is drag. Oh, yeah. We're putting on an illusion, honey, and a show. And honey, it is not cheap. It is hard work. It is a progression. It is a learning experience. Can I get a hallelujah? Hallelujah. Because Thank you, you will color. Because you will not be completely 100% satisfied with your drag or your character for a very long time. I listen. I went through Chardonnay, Mystique. It's I found Lorraine, honey, and I am now living the life of who I feel I am. And that's because you know what I, I did a little quick blog yesterday, which I wasn't trying to be funny. I was just saying, you know what. I pay no mind to bitches. Bitch, I pay dude no mind. Because at the end of the day, you are not paying her and I bills. We're not paying your bills. So, honey, do you. Lift your head up high. If you want to be the fiercest out there, then apply your drag. That's right. Apply it to your life, honey. Don't play, don't toy, and don't make fun of it. If you're going to do it, honey, can I get another amen up in here? Amen and hallelujah. Do Thank it you. and do it all the way, honey, because, you know, I played for a very long time, and I'm going to tell you a little secret that just my close friends know, and you can probably see the difference. When I first stopped drag, 
and took that hiatus and moved to LA and was producing and doing all this other stuff and on red carpets with all these stars and such and such and such. Thought, you know, I, you, I thought I knew who I was, honey, and you don't know who I thought I was, trust me. But I came back and, girl, I lost the sense of pain. I lost the sense of drag, and but when I first started coming back out and created the Lorraine character, I was in Western Mass and I was fabulous of what was in the scene. I didn't think that I had to step or ante up my game because what I was seeing. Not that it was anything wrong, it was just that drag to me has lost its love. It was just a job now. And it's okay to be a job, but... You have to love your job That's in order right. for you to be as good as you want to be at your job. So, honey, what I was like, oh, girl, why am I going out and spending two, three hundred dollars on hair, costume, nails to go out to the club? And these girls is doing the same old thing every week. Not that I was being shady because there wasn't a shady part of that in my bone. That was my perspective. That's what I was thinking. But the good thing about it, ladies and gentlemen, is that I changed that. Thought. And I said, at the end of the day, that's their drag. And I respect them for that, and I honor them for that, and I will support them for that. But I will do me, and I decided to do me, honey, and it has just been fabulous. And um, it's, you know, that's just what it is. And I just want to say, because we have to close soon, I'm going to get a little closer, because this is not only my sister, this is my auntie, this is my TT, this is my brister, my sister, this is my drag partner in crime, this is a mentor, this is somebody who I respect dearly. I need y'all to understand that when you see this woman, you know how what is that song? Bow down, bitches, bow down. Because at the end of the day, Western Mass, Connecticut, Boston and New York, she's been there, done it, and 16 titles. If you are a pageant queen, honey, they understand what 16 titles is, and that is a lot of work. So I salute you. I love you for who you are, and I'm glad that she knows who she is. And I just want to say that if nobody else tells you, I absolutely admire you for all of you've done in the LGBT community. Everything that you've done in the drag stage performances. This girl used to, let me tell you what she used to do. She used to do the Golden Girls theme song. And then she would go into a, a real cunt song, like either I'm Telling You or Woman Got the Power. The uh, last uh, performance that I seen from her, No Shade, was at the Shea S. And she did the Jeffersons, honey, moving on up into single ladies. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. With your little gray number on. It was just amazing. That is the type of drag that this icon brought to the stage and still is bringing to the stage so can you quickly tell everybody and then i'm gonna finish thanking you with a big hug and a kiss where can they find you because i know she's a social media queen honey you can find me on facebook i have two i have the savannah rivers fan page and i and you could find me on facebook savannah rivers i guess that's the yeah so it's facebook.com forward slash savannah rivers, rivers. And do you have Twitter or any Instagram or anything? I have Twitter. I have Instagram. Instagram on Black Zircon. Ooh. And yeah, it's Twitter. Sexual chocolate. <laughs> and on Twitter, you just look up Savannah Rivers and I'm there. And honey, follow, like, and when I tell you mama gives you looks, L-O-O-K-S, honey, for days, she gives you look for days. So um, what do you want to tell the kids real quick? Give them a little, a little history lesson, honey. Well, my advice to the up-and-coming drag queens and drag queens that are just starting out, or even if you're around, have a job so that you can balance the drag world with the expenses of it. Because drag is not cheap. Um, just go and, you know, get your little job, part-time or whatever, to support your drag. And... Um, Always be on time and always be courteous because those are the people that are giving you your tips. And that's who we are basically working for. And thank you for 30 years and to another 30 years. Thank you all for just accepting me and accepting me with all my flaws and everything. I think it's just wonderful and I'm very honored to be accepted that way. And it's been an honor to be a part of the LG group. 
I love it. And I love you all. Thank you. Amen. You heard it first from Savannah Rivers. So I want to thank you on behalf of the drag community, the LGBT, and the Lorraine Bow Show for everything you've done. I will be around supporting this icon and diva for a 30 year plus to come, honey. And she will be around for a lot longer and her and I are going to be working on some other great things because I absolutely adore and love her so I'm going to give you my hugs kisses and smooches and thank you for mwah, double kisses mwah. thank you for coming on and what I want you to really do though um, before we leave we're going to rewind this a little bit because I've been wanting to ask you this Mama was on Jerry Springer what year was that? It was in 1993. She was on in Jerry Springer in 1993. I need you to, they can Google it and see it. it. It's a hilarious episode. Mama was serving fierce fish back then, honey, and she's still doing it now. So that was the part where you was um, telling your, your parents, right? Your My mother. mother. Telling yeah. her mother who she really was. So I want you to take note that she went on national television to tell close loved ones what and who she was in 1993. Half of you were still in your parents' nutsacks. The other half of y'all was still in elementary school. In 1993, I was in high school, so I can kind of relate to a little bit of it, but I wasn't openly gay or openly out being me who I was. So for me to see that, that was a huge, huge, huge encouragement for me to continue the public media to say thank you, be who you are, don't let anybody tear you down. Not another queen, not another boy, girl, brother, sister, mother, honey. Love them from far, but love you at most is most important, honey. Because if you can't love yourself, how the hell are you going to love somebody else? That's not my line. I know I'm stealing it from RuPaul, but it's a true phrase, honey. So God bless you. Stay tuned for more of the Lorraine Show every Monday on Lorraine TV. And give a warm welcome, Lorraine Goodbye to the legendary Savannah Rivers by following her on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Double kisses, guys. Hi, world. It's me, Lorraine.